Good morning. I'm Pastor Cindy Finn. Uh, this is the Algona First United Methodist Church. We are so glad to have you worshiping with us this morning in this uh, beautiful spring day. We are working on a series of hope, a sermon series where we um, pray that you will feel the hope of God and know that you are not alone, that though we worship apart, we are together. So together, let us say responsibly our call to worship. Will you join me? In the midst of difficult times, we have new life from Christ. Come, let us praise the God of new life. Let us worship the one who is with us forever. Thanks be to God for all that he has done. Amen. And now let us join together in that old hymn for a thousand tongues to sing. with me in our opening prayer. God of hope, we come into your presence this morning with confidence that you will meet us here. Where there is sadness, bring joy. Where there is tiredness, bring refreshment. Where there is despair, bring a renewed sense of hope. Let this time be a sanctuary, a safe haven for us a home for holy words and songs and prayers as we devote ourselves to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We have just a handful of announcements to offer to you. Remember that um, throughout the month of May, we will be worshiping online and worshiping apart Committee meetings and activities at the church uh, will not meet during the month of May. 
But uh, as I said, we worship to apart but together. We worship on Wednesday nights together at 645 on Facebook Live and then at this time at 9 o'clock on Sunday mornings. On Tuesday evenings at 7 o'clock, you are welcome to join us on Zoom for a Zoom book study. We have one more week uh, of acting on faith, and then we're moving to Adam Hamilton's book called Unafraid. The Zoom meeting ID and password has been sent out by email. It is in the flame. It'll be sent out again this week if you would like to join us, not, not this coming Tuesday, but the next Tuesday, which I believe is May 19, will start uh, the Unafraid by Adam Hamilton. You are welcome to join us, though, for our last acting on faith, if you would like. Um, uh, other announcements, if you have things that you would like us to know about or you would like the congregation to know about, we do send out a daily email and um, we do send out information on a regular basis. So if you have things that you would like people to know about, please um, let others know. Um, one last thing to offer to you, this is Mother's Day, so happy Mother's Day to all the moms. We're going to be doing a little tribute after a bit. Remember that it is our tradition here at Algona First United Methodist Church that um, this is a time when you can make a donation to the foundation in honor of your mother. So if that's something you are interested in, please uh, call the office if you'd like more information or call the chairperson of our foundation board, and that would be Thomas Larson. Well, let's move on then to our joys and our concerns and offer the prayers that we have. Um, prayers for us at, at this point would be on lifting up Paula Till, who is suffering from cancer, and she is um, at home with hospice, not doing well at all, but I know that she would feel your prayers greatly. Remember to continue, <clears throat> excuse me, lifting up those who are affected, either, either contracted the coronavirus or um, economically have been affected by the coronavirus. And all of us who um, are still and continue to be safe in practicing social distancing. And then lastly, to lift up those businesses and those churches who have decided to um, resume normal services, nor normal business. So lift them up in this time that is so uncertain. I know that you have prayers in your hearts. Please, please feel free to send those prayers into us. Every Tuesday, we send out a devotion um, written and um, put together by Pastor Karen. Along with that, there are the prayers of the people in, listed with that devotion that's sent out by email. If you would like a mailed copy, let us know in the office. Those prayers that you have in your hearts now, though, let's take a moment of silence to allow God to hear those prayers. If, the, if today is a day that prayers are not coming easily, I ask that you just sit in silence and allow the presence of God to fill you. We'll follow this time with a pastoral prayer, and then I'll ask you to join me in the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray together. Oh God of hope, we know that you are with us. We know in our minds, we can read it in scripture, we read it in other places to know that you go before us. But today we ask that you speak to our hearts, that you remind our hearts of your love for us, that you remind our hearts of your grace and your mercy that you tell our hearts who often can wander away 
feeling unloved, that you find us to be the most of beloved. O God of graciousness, remind us that we are forgiven people, that it is through your Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life, that we have freedom from sin, that we may know only eternal life. Remind us, O oh God. Today, as we have lifted prayers of our hearts, as we have lifted those who are in need and circumstances, we ask that you fill this world with your healing touch. We ask, O oh God, that you would heal this place and this world of illness and virus, that you would be with those who need to know during their grieving that you offer peace. We ask that you be with those who are in war-torn countries and those who are starving either from food or spirit, that you would reassure them that you are here and that there are witnesses to walk with them. Oh God, we give our lives to you. For remind us that we not only pray for others, but we must pray for ourselves. So we lift our own lives to you and ask that you would be beside us and all around us. We pray all of this to you, God of hope, knowing that it is through you and the Holy Spirit that we may find strength, that we may find courage that we may find peace. It is through your Son that we have been taught of all of this. So today we pray back to you a prayer that your Son taught us, a prayer that has tested the ages and that we know all by heart. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So during this time, we often would, well, we do, we call ushers down and we pass the plate. During the month of May, we are lifting up our office and office supplies. Um, granted, we are not printing bulletins at this point, but we are um, sending out the flame and printing those. Um, we've been helping the hospitality committee in, um, uh, hopefully you've received a letter, a, a card from someone at the hospitality committee. So in the office, we've been helping out with that. So if you would like to, on top of your regular tithes and offerings, to donate a little bit to uh, the office and office supplies, please do that. Remember that there are three ways that you can give. And that is by mailing in your offering, dropping it off at the church in the little black mailbox, or by electronic funds transfer. Let's pray right now for the finances of our church and for our personal finances, and that they glorify God. Let's pray now. Oh, we thank you, gracious one, that you have continued to be faithful to us that in your faithfulness we have been able to reach out through our office and through our worship services to many, many people. We ask that what we have given back, be it monetary, be it in our giving of our time and in the giving of our minds, that you, Lord, would be glorified in this. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 
And so now I hope that you enjoy. We have a video of Hoyt Crouch, and Hoyt is a young musician, and he is playing, um, I believe it's called Peace Like a River. Amazing. Thank you for sharing your talent with us. Being that today is Mother's Day, um, we've asked some of our individuals from the church to send in pictures or tributes to their mothers. Um, they're, um, right now we're going to show a PowerPoint that has a few of those um, tributes. And um, we have pictures with some, um, some tributes to moms. Um, I'm not going to read the tributes beside, but once those tributes go through, then there will be a time when we will pray for our moms and, um, and pray for mothers in general. So as we go through that, there will be a line and then some silence for you to pray, and there will be about four of those, and then at the end, there is a prayer that you will pray together, that we will pray together. So let's watch and look at those tributes that have been sent in so far. Are you ready to pray? Hmm? Yeah, just at the first slide and just we'll we'll just flip through those slides until we get to the prayer and then we'll pray together. Yeah. Very good. I'm not gonna read through them.
Okay, so are you on the prayer where it says four mothers who have given us life? Okay, good. Let's, let's go ahead and pray that then. Okay. Will you pray with me? For mothers who have given us life and love, that we may show them reverence and love, we pray to the Lord. For mothers who have lost a child through death, that their faith may give them hope and their family and friends support and console them, we pray to the Lord. For women, though without children of their own, who like mothers have nurtured and cared for us, we pray to the Lord. For mothers who have been unable to be a source of strength, who have not responded to their children and have not sustained their families, we pray to the Lord. And now will you join me in our prayer? Loving God as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. Bless these women that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. I hope you enjoy this day. I know that you are apart from many of you from your moms, but I hope you get to talk to her and send a message to her and especially send a message to those women who've been like moms to, to you. Let's move on to our scripture reading. Our scripture reading is being read today by Stren Crouch. He is reading from the book of Ephesians and the book of Romans. I'm going to be reading Ephesians chapter 1, verses 7 to 14. It is right for me to think this way about all of you, because you hold me in your heart. For all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight, to help you to determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced a harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. I want you to know, beloved, that what has happened to me has actually happened to spread the gospel, so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to everyone else that may imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers and sisters have been made confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, dare to speak the word with greater boldness and without fear. Not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation awaits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it. In hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay, and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies, for in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows that in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Thank you, Strand. May we be blessed by the hearing of those words. 
I want to pray with you today um, from a book of prayers, and these are um, prayers of blessing. This book is called To Bless the Space Between Us. It's by John O'Donohue. Let's pray together. This prayer called For an Exile. I have to say that I chose this prayer because with the coronavirus and us praying and worshiping apart, I'm feeling a little like an exile. So let's pray together. When you dream, it is always home. You are there among your own. The rhythm of their voices rising like song. Your blood would sing through any dark. Then you awake to find yourself listening to the sounds of traffic in another land. For a moment, your whole body recoils at the strange emptiness of where you are. This country is cold to your voice, is still a place without echoes. Nothing of yours has happened here. No one knows you. The language slows you. The thick accent smothers your presence. You sound foreign to yourself. Your eyes reflect how strange you seem. When seen across a cold distance, there has no bridge to carry. The charisma in which your friends delight at home. Though your work here is hard, it brings relief, helps your mind in returning to the small bounties of your absence. Evening is without protection. Your room waits, ready to take you, back like some convict who is afraid of the life outside. The things you brought from home look back at you, out of place here. They take on lonely power. You cringe at the thought that someone from home might see you now here in this unsheltered room. Now is the time to hold faithful to your dream to understand that this is an interim time full of awkward disconnection. Gradually you will come to find your way to friends who will open doors to a new belonging. Your heart will brighten with new discovery. Your presence will unclench and find ease, letting your substance be and promise be seen. Slowly a new world will open for you, the eyes of your heart refined. By this desert time will be free to see and celebrate the new life for which you sacrificed everything. O oh, gracious one, O oh, gracious one, be our strength and our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Oh, how I miss all of you. Oh, how I miss all of you. The church is so quiet. I miss the rhythm and the hustle and the bustle of the church. It feels foreign. Like in the prayer from John O'Donohue, it, it, it feels different. We're in a different room. Not to mention how strange it is to preach to an empty sanctuary. It's a very strange thing. Paying attention, I have to pay attention to where my eyes go. Am I looking at the camera? Am I looking up here? Do you think I'm staring off into space somewhere? It's a strange time. And yet, there is hope. It is so exciting to have a few people here. And we do. You're not seeing everybody that's here. Ryan Schmidt is operating the computer, and Aaron Schmidt is our videographer today, and Anna Cox, you've seen, she's leading our singing, and Sean Stemsred is, is playing our beautiful organ. And you don't see Mike. He's sitting here in the pews with us. As weeks go, I believe we're evolving. I really do. I think our streaming ability, thank you to Ryan, is getting better and better. Several weeks ago, Ryan put a list together of equipment that we needed to make um, our online better. 
And Megan, our, ex our administrative assistant, who is a fairly new, you've probably not met Megan yet, but she ordered these things online, and then we waited, and we waited for them to be delivered. Prime, two-day prime is not a thing anymore. It just isn't. But we knew eventually our, in our hope that things would arrive. There was no, no doubt that they would be delivered at some point. And our hope was realized as our items came in. Deliveries, deliveries come whenever these days. But we did not wane. We had hope that the items would come. And they did. Last week I shared with you about hope. That hope is to trust in something, to wait for something to happen, to look for it, to desire something, or to expect that something will be made better, or to uh, make things to happen that, that is right. To have hope is a powerful way of living, because it is in hope that our hearts turn towards God, and in faith we live knowing that somehow and in some way God will make things right. We have proof of this. God has a reputation of hope. We can see it in the stories of old. Abraham had hope in that God called for him to leave his country and to leave his family to go to a new land. The people of Israel had hoped that God would save them from Pharaoh and the grip of slavery. Over the next few Sundays, we will be, be continuing to explore hope in this time of pandemic when we are hearing of acts of courage and messages that confuse us. Watch any news program and you will hear opposite stories and stories of great sadness, people who have been affected by the coronavirus. This time, though we are together, this time that we are together and yet apart, I pray that you find courage in God's hope. Now having said this, my question always is, how do we find hope? Where do we find hope? How do we keep that hope alive in our hearts and our everyday living? And when things were the way they used to be, we could lean on each other. And we still can lean on each other, but it's different now. You might have to FaceTime someone or call them on the phone. It's different. We spend a lot more time by ourselves, alone. So how do we keep hope alive? Well, the Apostle Paul writes to the church in Rome, For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is not seen is not hope. Excuse me, I'm going to try that again. For hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. You see, the Apostle Paul says that if we hope for what we can see, then it's really not hope. But hope for what we cannot see, that, that is what is important. That's what makes hope. Though if we can't see it, how can we hope for it? Okay, so look at it this way. We all hope for a cure for the coronavirus. If we had a proven vaccine, there would be no illness, no social distancing, no cause for alarm, no need for a cure. However, we do not have a proven vaccine. So in the absence of a vaccine, humans are suffering. They're suffering from this virus and for, from all of the, the ways that we are affected in our lives. So we hope. We hope for a cure, for a proven vaccine that might free us. For the Apostle Paul, hope that is unseen requires endurance. 
and endurance with hope, knowing that God is with us, providing for us, working behind the scenes somehow to make things right. For Apostle Paul, there is no hope without suffering. Yeah, that made me question too. And that's a whole topic for a whole nother sermon, a whole nother day. But for today, we must hope that in our suffering, God is with us. And that the present struggles do not defeat us. For our suffering will not have the final word. I'm going to look at you and say this again. Our suffering will not have the final word. So, I know that in this writing from um, the Apostle Paul, this book of Romans, especially this passage from the 8th chapter, I'm pretty darn sure that the Apostle Paul knows how hard it is to be in the middle of suffering. I mean, he didn't live through the coronavirus, but I know he lived through tough times. And he saw others live through horrible times. We want our lives to be back to the way it was before. We want freedom of movement. We want to be able to open our businesses and go out to eat and go on vacation. For me, I want to be able to go to the care center and to the hospital if needed, and most of us want to go to the hairdresser. But we just want things to be back. Paul knows that we need help. So he directs us in our praying and in our need for hope. He directs us to that power of prayer, but not just in any certain way, but through the power of the Holy Spirit. C.S. Lewis is one of my favorite authors, and he writes this about prayer. He says, the moment you wake up each more, mo- the moment you wake up each morning, all your wishes and hope for the day rush at you like wild animals. And the first job each morning consists in shoving it all back, in listening to that other voice, taking that other point of view, letting that other larger, stronger, quieter life come flowing in. C.S. Lewis is talking about our prayer life. He is saying that each and every morning when we wake up, when our eyes pop open, that we must be in prayer. Each and every day we must be in conversation with God. You see, prayer is the most powerful of connections that we have with God, and not only with God, but with each other. James 5 says... The power of a righteous person is, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Prayers give us strength to withstand anything. We often think of prayer as just simply speaking to God. Maybe having that list of God will you, God can you, God are you going to do this for me. But that list, that prayer that speaking to God doesn't necessarily have to be a list. It can be just quiet conversation with God. The most powerful of prayers is silence before God. A conversation that allows God to speak to you and you to God through the Spirit. Prayer makes a difference. Even though you may think you're quietly sitting somewhere or you're in your room or maybe you didn't even say a word, prayer makes a difference. The story goes of a man who went into his young daughter's bedroom, found her praying there. Intrigued as to what she might pray, he stopped and listened. He was immediately fascinated as he heard her pray, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and on and on. She kept saying the same thing over and over. 
Finally, he asked her, <clears throat> Sweetheart, what are you doing? She said, I'm praying, of course. He said, why are you praying through the alphabet? She said, because I don't know what to pray. And I figured that if I just said all the letters of the alphabet, God would put them all together and figure it out. When we cannot seem to find the words to pray, the Apostle Paul tells us that the Holy Spirit comes to us, <clears throat> sometimes teaching us how to pray, sometimes praying for us, sometimes just holding us as we weep before God. Through the Holy Spirit, we're a give, we are given strength to resist the suffering of this world. The Holy Spirit becomes our intercessor, praying to God on our behalf. The Holy Spirit comes into us, giving us strength and hope and empowers us so that we might not give up. Sometimes the Holy Spirit has us just sit in silence. And other times we're led to scripture or to books where others have written prayers. The Holy Spirit gives us hope to move forward and to move on. So let me offer to you more prayers that come from uh, another person. This book is called Prayer Seeds. It's by a woman named Joyce Rupp. She's actually from Iowa, and she writes and writes and writes books on prayer. This was introduced to me by a friend. This is Prayer Seeds. This prayer that I am going to pray to you from um, Joyce Rupp is called A Prayer for Strength. Let's pray together. Rock and refuge, stronghold of souls, unshakable one, infuse your strength into the places where I feel the greatest, strength, greatest weakness. Permeate the parts of my life that continually challenge my patience. Increase an ability to accept those who seem to be most unacceptable. Lessen any tendency in my spirit that gives way to a loss of hope. Reinforce an awareness of the daily manifestations of your presence. Boost my spirit. When I think I cannot manage what is mine to be and do. Provider of purpose, firm foundation, enduring love, support my determination to give the best of myself to others. Fortify the forgiveness you have placed and nurtured in my heart. Sustain a solid belief that I can get through what appears insurmountable. Bolster my efforts to be a person who reaches out to those who suffer. Foster greater trust in you when worries and anxieties attempt to prevail. Impart the courage I need to change what appears to be unchangeable. In you, I find sufficient strength, abounding love, and secure serenity. Amen. May you find peace and hope in this time. Know that the Holy Spirit fills you and prays for you and on your behalf. And know that we will be together again, that there will be um, a way for us to have our businesses and our life and all of our things together again. Know that God is working this out. May you, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, know all hope. And now it makes sense to sing our ending hymn, my hope is built on nothing less. Let's sing together. Jesus, blood and righteousness. 
refrain of that song is so powerful. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Stand on the promise of hope from Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Hope that will see you through even in the midst of tragedy. Hope that is fused and, and, and filled with the Holy Spirit that will take you and give you peace. May you, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, know the love that God has for you. And all the people said, Amen. Have a wonderful week, everyone. We'll see you on Wednesday at 645. And know that we miss you so very much, and we love you. We'll see you later. Bye, everybody.